as really how it should be to be a real cultural diplomat. So I will kindly ask uh, Vida Ogenovic now to present Monica Mokre. Thank you, Milena. Hello, everybody. I am honored by this position. <laughs> and uh, it's a great pleasure to introduce this wonderful lady, Madame Monica Mokre, who is a political scientist uh, and she works at the. Pardon? Well, she works as, as a political scientist at the Institute of Culture Studies, and I can't do it anymore <laughs> because, <laughs> because of the light. But I know that it's also very active in, uh, in uh, immigrants' policy and, and very successful at it because she taught at the University of Vienna a semester in 2015 or 2016. 2016. Uh, he taught immigrants' policy, which is wonderful. And, um, well, we're only really very happy to have her with us today. And I also salute this wonderful forum. Thank you, Milena, for organizing it. And please keep it. Let's do it traditionally, biannually at least. Biannually, maybe. Biannually at least. Uh, and I'm sorry for missed some of, of these wonderful gatherings because I've been otherwise engaged, I've been abroad. And uh, Madame Mokre, the floor is yours. Thank you so much for the invitation and for the very kind uh, introduction. Um, I think this can uh, chime in quite fine. It was heard from Jonathan now, so what I try to suggest is that one way of thinking about cultural diplomacy is thinking about cultural diplomacy from below and I use some case studies and some kind of structural theoretical considerations about artistic projects with refugees and migrants. Um, the, like the, the, so this is I guess also what you were talking about political agency outside of government is somehow happening there. Um, the framework of that, I think, is quite clear. I mean, I'm Austrian myself, as you heard, and especially in Austria and in Germany, we had some kind of really breathtaking changes from 2015 and the welcome culture to what is happening now in Austria. It's about uh, border closings, rejection of refugees. Recently, I read in a German newspaper what we need now is a deportation culture. Um, so this is really, I mean, it's, it's kind of, well, it's outrageous, but it's also, um, it's really an interesting question how a discourse can change so rapidly and so dramatically. Um, on the other hand, in parallel to that, we have a huge range of, well, of NGO activities, uh, civil society activities, which are still in this mood of welcome culture and also in the artistic field and artistic projects working with refugees and with migrants. Um, and this is what I want to talk about, and as I also said in my question to Jonathan, I do this in a really solidary mood, and most of the projects I want to present, I like, and I know, and sometimes I know the people working in that, still I'd like to raise some critical questions to them to discuss with you, because I think it's also important, um, yeah, to have this, like, the, the critical mind which goes on and on by questions, as Jonathan also said. So these are basically my, my, my uh, questions to these projects. What are the aims? And there are different ones. And sometimes it might be that the aims of the artists are different from what is actually politically done with this project. So it might be that you have like really a, the aim of political critique and still it is used as a kind of smoke screen for other things going on. So you, you finance a theater play uh, while you're deporting other people um, and so on and so forth but also who is visible, who, is, who represents whom, and who gains the monetary capital within this kind of art is not that uh, large, but also the cultural capital, which I think is an important question. Um, and how can you work together? This is not only a problem for arts projects, but for all these projects, I think, how can you work together on eye level when you have radically different privileges, possibilities, and risks? And in a way, I think we can also think about these questions as a kind of cultural diplomacy, because it, it is mirroring in a very small scale uh, problems between the global north and the global south in this kind of relations. 
Um, my own position in that is on the one hand, uh, as, as you very uh, kindly said, I mean, I'm a political scientist, I'm, I'm teaching in this field, I'm working in the field of cultural politics and in the field of asylum and migration politics, and I'm also a political activist in this field. So I, I, I'm also, I mean, uh, I'm not in a really, in, in, in maybe in the correct distance you should have as an academic or researcher to these kind of questions. Um, Starting up, I mean, uh, uh, with this question also about what are the arts about, what are political functions of the arts, I mean, there is this long discussion, is does freedom of the arts mean that you shouldn't have any kind of political influence, and uh, I don't go into that, you, you briefly mentioned that, all this question of avant-garde, of revolutionary art, and so on and so forth. Um, I would say that irrespectively somehow of the own aims and goals of artists, we can argue that in national societies, the arts play a huge role for cohesion or for solidarity. So the cultural heritage, but also some kind of the contemporary arts, which are uh, like uh, important expressions of whatever our collective identity is. Um, so the, the construction of the nation, which as we know is a construction, but this is based to a very high degree on culture and the arts. Um, and then we can see, obviously, cultural diplomacy as an encounter between different national cultures. Uh, and this is especially important, as we also know, in democracies, because democracies work in this way that um, we accept that other people are have the equal liberty as we have because of this solidarity, cohesion, collective identity. So it's this, you know, the, the, the French Revolution, liberty, equality, and, and, and fraternity, whereas fraternity or solidarity is kind of the condition of giving each other equal liberty. Um, now, obviously, uh, when we talk about uh, arts projects with refugees and migrants, mostly this means also to criticize this form of understanding culture and the arts. This form of understanding national boundaries is something um, more or less naturally given, maybe not constructed and also not easily changeable. Uh, so this is something that is a part of, uh, of some of the arts projects. But still, um, my question to that is, uh, what, what is actually done here? So is it to say, okay, we can really transgress these boundaries, or we should, should maybe ignore these national boundaries, or is it rather about integrating our uh, refugees and migrants into uh, national culture? And even that is done out of a rather, well, progressive kind of point of view. Eh? I mean, the, the populist right says this is impossible. Eh? The, the, the culture is different, uh, people have to go home. So you try, uh, but still it makes a difference. Say, okay, we integrate people into our culture, whatever it might be. Or if you say, okay, we change, we, we change by transcultural uh, uh, encounters, by uh, cultural translations, what is culturally going on. Um, and so as a first example, I would show you, I, I mean, I, I, I rather like this, I like all the examples I show to you. So this is a project, it was called uh, Helping As We Do It. It was organized by uh, Austrian Public Broadcasting, and it was a project consisting of different video clips uh, where refugees were um, reciting some part of, um, uh, of Austrian literature, uh, poems, whatever. This is an, uh, a refugee from Afghanistan, uh, and he is reciting a poem by Ernst Jandl, whom you might know, he's a very renowned Austrian poet, and he wrote a poem called Schützengraben, which means fire trench in German. And he left out the vocals, uh, the vowels in this Schützengraben, and then it sounds like a machine gun or something like that. And now we shall see if, in fact, the internet is working. Schützengraben, yeah, so it means fire trench, and but you will see. Schützengraben, Schützengraben, da 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 da, da 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 da, Krim, da 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 da, Schützengraben, 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 Krim, Schützen, Schützen, da 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 da, da 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 da, Schützengraben, Schützengraben, Krr, 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 Schützengraben, Schützengraben, da 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 da. Sprechen lernt man nur. So actually what you were doing then is it was a kind of um, advertising to, uh, to pay for German courses. Um, 
and by the way, he's he's an he's an Afghani actor, and I I've listened to this poem many times. Uh, it's rarely done as well as he did it. Um, so on the one hand, you have this Ernst Jandl poem, which is an important part of, Aust part of Austrian culture. On the other hand, Ernst Jandl is a really critical poet, so it's also kind of more sophisticated than having I don't know refugee playing Mozart or something like that. Um, uh, and you see this guy, so you also have to say there's some kind of self-representation of this refugee. Uh, at the same time, I mean, he has to uh, present something that was chosen for him by other people and is part of Austrian culture. And what I thought is kind of problematic and not untypical of this kind of projects, uh, you see in the, in, in the movie just his, his first name. Uh, so he, he remains kind of, you know, it's the, the refugee, so to say. Uh, another example, which also is very much um, embedded in high culture uh, in Austria, is the play Die Schutzbefohlenen, and the wards, the ones who are given to your protection, uh, by Elfriede Jelinek. Elfriede Jelinek is a Nobel laureate, as you know, she is one of the most renowned contemporary uh, poets, uh, writers, uh, authors in Austria, maybe the one. Um, and she wrote a, a, a play about uh, refugees, or maybe maybe it's rather a play about a critique of Austrian government, but uh, the words are put in the mouths of uh, refugees. Uh, this was shown in different theaters, but in Vienna in the Burgtheater, which is our main theater. So it was really, I mean, when we talk about political economy of culture, it was like in the focus of that. Uh, and also we, I mean, this, this could also lead to a debate about what, what you said about Bitev going to like the, the traditional places, so to say, okay, to put it there, really there, where we have a very uh, well distinguished audience or something like that. The, the play in itself is, um, beautiful in languages, everything by Jelinek, and very critical of the government. Uh, so the, the, the last sentences of the play go in, uh, in the uh, translation, it will not happen, it is not, we are not here, we have come, but we are not here. And I just show you a very brief part just to give you an uh, impression of that. If it's German, so it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but just a bit of that. This is actually from a German theater because I couldn't find the, the one from the book. Okay, I guess you get the grid of it. So it's it's about the stories of, of these refugees and then also about a kind of, well, um, showing somehow Austrian culture. Um, now what this is, it is obviously a play about refugees. It is not by refugees, it is not with refugees. Um, you see a, a brilliant uh, play by a brilliant Austrian author um, performed by professional Austrian or German uh, actors. Um, and by, by the way, I think this, this is a good choice. I would have hated it if, I mean, in the book theater, and it is, uh, you only see white faces, you only see Austrians or Germans. So I think it would really have been a mistake to use this then to bring some migrants there. So this, this would not work. So I think it, it works perfectly well. But it is, uh, it is something, it, uh, yeah, it is, it is about those people and um, partly it was also difficult for refugees uh, to, to accept that, the way in which it was like, uh, we we plea we pray help us because they didn't want to ex express themselves like that. Um, based on this play, and I think it's also interesting, there were two other uh, two other um, uh, theatric or artistic projects at least, and those two uh, projects came out of a of a sec another understanding maybe of what you can do in this kind of in the arts. Uh, working uh, politically in the, in the field of uh, ref, uh, asylum and migration, namely to say, okay, we have a solidary struggle here. In fact, we want to do something together, uh, 
because we want a different society. And this holds true for the refugees, for the migrants, as well as for those who are not. We want a different and open society, whatever uh, uh, intercultural, transcultural society. Um, and uh, the two, um, the, the two uh, uh, examples I want to show you now, they come out, personally spoken, of a refugee protest movement which took place in Vienna and where the people, uh, the, 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 the Austrians as well as the refugees were part of this movement. Uh, and I would say that this is somehow related, this understanding of solidarity to, to, to this socialist understanding of solidarity as our common struggle for a better future or whatever there is. Um, so the first one is, uh, this was a, a pluri, very plurilingual project by Peter Waterhouse. Peter Waterhouse is half English, half, half Austrian, I think. Um, and he is uh, working with, has been working with language and translation for a long time. Uh, and he's doing on the one hand translations, but then also kinds of where he plays around with the sound of words. Uh, and so he worked with a group of refugees and they translated part of this Jelinek uh, play uh, to English, Georgian, Pashto and Urdu, which I really cannot imagine how this works because Jelinek is very difficult even in German. Um, but it was also playing around with the sound. So what you see here, I mean, as I said, the German word is die Schutzbefohlen, and then the English translation was then die should he be fallen in, which sounds like the Schutzbefohlen. And so this was also something they were playing around. And I mean, really, I, I, I know many of the people with whom I uh, work there, many of the Pakistani people, they really like that and they felt they are in a team and they are working together. Still, one has to say, if you talk about this, uh, this, this, uh, project, uh, probably the name Waterhouse comes to our mind, not the name of the, the other ones who were part of that. The second uh, uh, example uh, was um, uh, organized by Tina Leisch, also a very uh, active uh, theater uh, and movie maker, politically active for a long time. Uh, and she used parts of the Yelenek play together and uh, converted them, transformed them together with, with asylum seekers who are in, the, in the, the largest reception center in Austria in Pfalzkirchen. So she found the people there uh, and she made a play with them, which was then more <coughs> about, their, uh, about their immediate experiences. See, this is a traditional uh, song saying how beautiful Vienna is. Um, this this uh, project uh, by Tina Leisch got some kind of weird um, um, fame, so to say, um, because they uh, they uh, performed it in in the university in Vienna, and they're kind. Uh, a right, extreme right-wing group, the Identitarians, the Identitarians came there to uh, disturb this uh, play, which was truly terrible for the people on the stage because they, they thought something's going on. No, I mean, they were like, they were not really shooting, but it was like the, 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 the sound of that, and they had a lot of artificial blood, and people were completely, I mean, those are traumatized people, they were re-traumatized. Still finished then the play, which I thought was very courageous. Anyway, so this brought some kind of fame also to this play, and this uh, led to the fact that now it will, no, it was performed in the city hall of Vienna, which is kind of nice. But then I talked with Tina Leisch, and she also said um, 
Well, it is really nice, but I'm wondering, given the uh, given Austrian politics at uh, this point in time, if it is not a smokescreen, as I said before, what is going on by showing my or our work there? Um, in a way, what is happening in this uh, in these different projects, I think, um, is uh, also that you that it is a help for refugees. Um, this has some, uh, I mean talking about capitalism, so uh, people earn money. And uh, asylum seekers in Austria are not allowed to work, basically, but as artists, they are allowed to work and they can earn money. So it, it makes sense from this point of view. It can also mean that somehow you can transform, I guess, traumatic experiences uh, in another way to, to uh, maybe to approach them from another artistic way. Um, and this was a something, somebody, th this is a project I was involved with, um, the, the young guy you see here, uh, Mohamed Mouas, he's a friend from Algeria, and he made a movie where he um, repeated his route from Istanbul via Bulgaria, Romania, Hungary to Austria, made interviews with people, we talked about his experiences, and among other things, this was also an attempt, I think, by him to deal with his own experiences and his own traumatization. I don't think that it worked for him, this, but this, this is another story. Now, I'm not sure it's, okay. Uh, it's, I, I show you maybe also this short trailer about that. I just wanted to mention this movie was also um, financed within a festival. I wouldn't say it's a micro festival, but it's a small festival which focuses on political issues. Um, and this is somehow also where my question came out. I mean, this is a, it's a wonderful festival and I meet all my friends there and half of them have uh, produced something. And But somehow, I mean, all of us, we go out completely depressed because we saw a lot of stuff about deportation and whatever, and then we ask, our, we, want, we are wondering. I mean, shouldn't we try to get this to some kind of other audience? Uh? And also with regard to this festival, uh, this was something I thought when you, Lois, were uh, asking your question, when this started, there was, a you, there was a lot of critique by professional artists working in public art, community art, however you want to name it, um, who said, okay, fine, we do not get enough money, and now you give uh, money for the arts to people who are not artists, and most of them are not. Uh, so why? Uh, and this, uh, so this, uh, just to mention that they like the problems. Next uh, few days, next three days, we will leave in Istanbul to start our uh, traveling to see what happened for me and uh, what happened for a lot of refugees there who are crossing the border, who are traveling from Istanbul until here. When I come from Algeria until here, until Austria, I start uh, also from Istanbul. I worked hard there. I worked for Yeah, uh, and then finally, I mean, I would argue that the last three projects I showed to you really are done in, in the way of solidarity. I mean, also this, this, this movie, I, um, I, I was a small part of that. Um, and what we also saw is that this is very difficult to work, like on eye level, as I said before, uh, when we have such different, uh, also, yeah, cultural capital. I mean, this movie, we always said it's the movie by Mohammed Moors, and still I was asked at least three times if I could come to discuss that, if I could come to present, I said, okay, if Mohammed is coming, I can come with him, but that's it. Uh. So uh, you, you bring it with you, I, I bring it with me, I guess, no? Um, so uh, this is the one thing then also as it is a means to gain money, it also means that, uh, I mean, people are interested to be part of the project, somebody is deciding who is part of the project. Um, I, will, I decided to do this with uh, Mohammed and it helped him to get the money for his project. Uh, so all these kind of questions come up. And I would argue this comes out, is could be seen as part of a third understanding of solidarity which comes out of Christianity or especially Catholicism. Uh, and the Catholic uh, uh, social teaching as a kind of charity, universal uh, solidarity, which is important, I guess, and unavoidable in this situation where people have radically less, whatever, money, privileges than other ones, but still it's problematic as a paternalistic attitude, which is kind of furthered by that. Yeah. So this is basically what I, what I, what I want to say now, and I just would like to emphasize again, 
I think these projects are very important. I think they have a po had a positive impact. I'm uh, very much in favor of them and solidarity with them. And still I think that it makes sense to ask these questions to, to wonder what we ourselves or our, uh, in our scene, our friends are doing in this field. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. It was very interesting and uh, um, sort of um, uh, deep <laughs> understanding and, and a view of the problems. And I'm sure it will raise a lot of questions. And I, I thank you very much of um, mentioning one thing or pointing out that one very important thing, I think, about refugees and about their culture. Do you really, do we integrate them by, you know, dragging them from their culture and putting them almost force or almost forcefully in our, too, and in our culture, building them in, or we take their culture to broaden our own culture? That's a very interesting problem, really. It's probably the main problem, the, the main culture, the most important culture problem with immigration and the, uh, uh, contemporary immigrants. And um, uh, what else? I enjoy those excerpts that you showed us, these examples of uh, doing things. Uh, and, um, and yes, the first... Uh, the the the, f the f reaction is also the reactions different reactions to to these things are interesting. Yelinek's play uh, went well, but the play that uh, integrates immigrants in and takes immigrants as actors, uh, well, provoked a certain uh, rather interesting or or very I I should say imposing <laughs> reaction. And, um, oh, well, I'm, I'm very interested in that uh, pluring, plu plural linguistic material and, and problem as such because, um, you know, I grew up in a multilingual part of Serbia in Vojvodina wh where we really, I for one, did not really understand that we speak different languages because when I played with my Hungarian um, uh, schoolmates or, or, you know, of my age, kids of my age, I spoke Hungarian with them and to them. But when I went home, I spoke Serbian, I mean, with my parents and, and my uh, grown-ups. So I did not see any difference. My, well, I, I knew there was a difference, but there was a difference as, uh, given as such not a difference uh, any that has some important meaning for me. So, and um, you know, I'm vice president of Pan International, uh, which is uh, a global writers' union, as a matter of fact, and in price and in comprise like uh, 160 countries, among them 45 different languages. And that's interesting when they come, well, uh, there is no lingua franca for us. There is uh, four languages that are in use, uh, English, French, Spanish, and Russian. And then, um, and then when they speak their own tongue, sometimes we don't have, well, uh, some of us don't speak any of these languages, some of the writers, we don't have any translations, and we pretend that we do understand them. <laughs> <laughs> which is somehow, uh, uh, which is like plural ling ling linguistic <laughs> step. And um, well, uh, thanks again, and I give you the floor. Yes, ma'am. Could you please, I don't see it, because see you, could you introduce yourself? Hello, um, and thank you for uh, this presentation. Uh, I, um, I think that it's very important to use art as therapy because of the traumatism we can 
witness in uh, the community of refugees and migrants. But uh, I will say something is which is not linked to uh, the work you are mention, mentioning. Uh, it's a general constatation about uh, working with migrants, uh, working with refugees, which uh, became a kind of fashion today. I receive every day uh, mails from people uh, wanting to go. I'm from Syria and I'm living in Lebanon. And uh, people will want to go to, to the camps to see refugees as if they are curiosity. And uh, it's a way to raise money also because uh, there, are, uh, there is a lot of money to projects with migrants. Uh, at the same time, in Europe, we have uh, some projects uh, about migration, about uh, refugees, because it's part of the reality, and I accept it, because the artist has to uh, see what is happening in his reality and uh, to, to f reflect about it in art. But uh, to present a low quality of art because they are refugees is not a solution. Um, there are very good artists between the refugees, and they can present very good uh, artwork. These can be presented and can have the opportunity to, to enter the field of uh, the production, uh, the, the uh, art market. But I don't like what is presented with a very low quality only because they are refugees and they are migrants. They are human beings and they can be very good artists. If they are not, don't present them. Uh, I'm, I'm not speaking about what you said. I speak in general because I don't like that way to, to have compassion with these very nice refugees uh, we have to help them, we have to present them, and we have very poor quality of art uh, in the name of refugees. I, I, I don't, uh, I can't admit it. And uh, please think about it. You spoke, uh, Jonathan, about uh, going to, uh, to uh, the area where people are not uh, uh, artists by, by profession. And uh, it's a very good experience for you as an artist to be in confrontation with these people. But uh, if they are not able to present something with uh, valuable uh, things, they are not, uh, uh, they don't deserve to, to present it. You understand what I say? It's a general constatation. Again, it's not against you, uh, no, no, no. Uh, what you said. Uh, I, I think uh, the use, using art as therapy is very good and is very important because uh, they have a lot of traumatism after all these uh, journeys uh, in the sea. Too briefly, um, uh, two things. I mean, art is therapy, yes, I agree. Uh, on the other hand, it doesn't work all the time, as I said. I mean, uh, this, this, this movie thing, I mean, was clearly re-traumatized by this. It was not a very good idea, <laughs> put it like that. Um, with regard to the arts projects, I mean, I also, I have a problem with this kind of fashion, but I think it's a, it's a different problem. So, uh, as I said, I'm a political activist in this field, and then I get emails by artists, I don't know, could you please organize some refugees for me, I want to do something, with them. come on, I mean, what is this now? Huh? Uh, so, I, I think, I mean, that the projects I, I, I showed to you came out of a common struggle, of a common political struggle. We were all together in that, and some of us were artists and were doing this. And I think you can make some very interesting projects if you know what you're doing. No? I mean, some of those people, like Tina Lai, she has been working for her whole life with uh, non-professional artists. She, she, she did a great movie about a women's prison, and the, 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 the women are presenting themselves in a, in a really charming way. So uh, this is a kind of technique also of artists, I guess. So this, I think, is important. I mean, I agree it shouldn't be out of compassion. This is another thing. Um, it shouldn't, uh, you should have your own interest in that, um, but I'm no, I wouldn't probably agree that every uh, refugee migrant, whatever, who is part of such a project has to be a professional artist by him or herself. Also given this very pragmatic reason that I, I, I don't know about the situation here, but basically in Austria, you can only work as an asylum seeker as an artist or as an academic, and there are not many uh, recognized academics. Artists is easier. Yes, thank you. Uh, I, I think your um, 
statements and understanding is very important because it emerges out of a lot of very strong historic concerns which have done a lot of very important work to understand issues of artistic value and quality and, and how we kind of understand production and the labor that is invested in production. The, and the motivations and the, the talents and the, the, the yeah, yeah, just what labor is. And, and, and so I think the que questions of quality are very, very important, but they inhabit a discourse that these other projects aren't inhabiting, um, which is not to say that these discourses don't overlap, uh, they don't dialogue, they're not re intrinsically related, they are. But I'd say that the work, well, talking generally, uh, works with refugees and I I immigrants, you know, their, their aspirations are not the criteria of quality yes. embodied in that other discourse. You know, that, that is not the condition of their practice. You know, that, that's not their aspiration. Um, th th there is, a, if you see the, the, w the world of culture as a kind of institutional ladder of privileged spaces, and every artist is trying to get to the top and become Picasso or whatever, you know. Um, then you will see it like that, but that's not what it is. We are working in a very hybrid cultural field of overlapping discourses which have their own understanding of value and representation of value. And I don't think we should think of it as part of the same thing. Yes, well, <laughs> Hi, hello. Um, Mike from Cape Town. Just in terms of the previous speaker, I was also wondering just about the discourse that you were talking about yesterday, um, Elena. You weren't in the session that I was part of, but I was just questioning this whole notion and discourse of, you know, the culture of humiliation for Africa and for the Arab world and the like. And I think that, that those kinds of discourses tend to perpetuate a particular kind of uh, perception of these of, of, of of these particular regions that disempower the people from those regions because it takes away the notion of agency that people actually have an ability to change that. It's more kind of perception of how people from Europe might see those regions, but that's not necessarily how people from those regions see themselves, but that wasn't going to be my question. Um, you were referencing earlier about the kind of dynamic that is faced at a national level in terms of vertical integration of refugees into Austrian culture as being almost replicating the global north, global south kind of dynamic as well. Who has resources, who doesn't have resources, what are the terms upon which that integration happens and the like. I wondered about the extent to which, um, I'm in Germany at the moment on a bit of a fellowship and we did a bit of a study tour of how different cities are dealing with the integration of, of, of refugees into German society. And one of the things that um, you know, I really wondered about is this kind of vertical integration because there's a lot of talk about how do you make people from other parts of the world part of German society um, without necessarily looking at horizontal integration. There are refugees from a whole range of different countries. Are there projects that you are aware of where people from different countries are working together and are there kind of particular strategies that they are adopting in terms of how they collectively view their integration into Austrian society as opposed to Austrian society saying these are the conditions under which you need to be integrated into our country. Christine from Germany, I can catch up immediately with what Mike uh, was asking because bringing some examples from the uh, North Rhine-Westphalia uh, Cologne uh, area, I also would like to make a fervent plea for lay activity because what we saw happening, for instance, in schools, hmm, also as a reply to your answer, is it integrating into the culture of the receiving country or something else? I would say it's end and end. 
because their the beautiful thing was uh, to see the curiosity of those 15 year old teenagers organizing uh, music festivals within their school, huh, which created space exactly for all these whoever was a lay practitioner, be it from hmm, Somalia, Afghanistan, uh, wherever, and also this curiosity to discover people of their own age, because probably that was the first time for a physical encounter and not just seeing these things on YouTube and, and somewhere else. So I, I think it would be beneficial to explore this dimension and uh, this also in reflection, Jonathan, what you say, because somehow you ex your initiative is also making a plea for amateur action hmm, in a professionalized uh, cultural management field from the responses you got. And that made me think about this old tradition of uh, organizing uh, family partings, large weddings. In Cologne, we have this carnival tradition. It's very easy for us to throw a party for 300 people. We don't call for professional event agency. Th it's a technique you acquire year after year after year as you go along. And these formats, because they are so deeply entrenched, they were very versatile in uh, welcoming uh, uh, a broad range of refugees from all ages who had fun in doing dance, uh, musical activities. So I really would also invite us to look a little bit to this amateur uh, practice uh, which, uh, which goes along and uh, in addition to the professional field because it's a continuum. Yes, I have a, a question to all of us, and I would like to hear, of course, your opinion. And it's also kind of the call for uh, thinking together, or call for the common action. And thank you very much. I think the work is incredibly important that you presented. Uh, but I'm thinking, and allow me to use very kind of the rough metaphor, that um, what is happening now is that we are, us uh, people in culture and arts, we are as kind of the uh, the first aid people at the battlefield. And we're having like the bleeding, uh, the wounded people that are bleeding and that need, need to be saved. So we are saving lives on different levels. But who will stop the fire? Like who will stop the fire? So my question is also very literal and also maybe it's utopia, but I think it's very important to think about it how we take the agency through arts and culture to uh, ask those questions and negotiate and press our governments in uh, asking new questions or doing actions that would cause to stop the fire at the end. And I know it's a big utopia, but we're having every day, like uh, we artists and the culture workers are getting these funds from EU and the refugees are coming and we are helping people in uh, like helping them to de-traumatize, integrate and so on. But people are dying every moment in those countries in every moment of this day. So how do we take this agency that, that could be, I mean, it's the question I guess for all of us. Thank you. We, we, uh, mo one more question and then we, My question is to you, not to Monica. And it's the, question, the question is to the people in the Balkans, because uh, you passed from this same experience before. So refugees from the Balkans. Mm. So what do you learn from your own history? As I can ask myself, what I learn from our Spanish Civil War experience of artists going up, and trying to explain and trying to see, etc. So I think uh, this, the story of the humanity is full of this kind of experiments. So why not we try to learn from what happens in the past, what happens to ourselves, to our parents, to our grand great parents, and try to do this in today migrants' situation? I'm afraid it doesn't help. History is not the teacher of the <laughs> 
history is trying to teach, but we will not learn. Huh? Um, very briefly, uh, some, some, some just, um, well, keywords maybe. Um, I think that there is a, a confusion uh, in terms of discourse and words between integration and assimilation. And uh, usually what uh, people are required to do is to assimilate. Integrate would mean that we have an open society where uh, different whatever influences can change the society and still we can be one society. And this is precisely what usually is not happening with all this about German and Austrian light culture and whatever there is. Um, and I think to have this kind of integration, to, to, to change something, therefore it is hor horizontal level is very important. Um, and I see it rather in, uh, not, not in state activities, at least in Austria, but in uh, yeah, civil society activities, which are based on common interests. And I think this is an important thing also with regard to schools and whatever there is, city quarters. I would say, let's downplay all these cultural differences. They exist, no question about that. But let's talk about what we have in common. And this could be an interest in a quarter. This could, just to give, I mean, we had a, I was part of a political movement. This was, uh, it was a refugee protest movement. There were very concrete claims for the status of refugees. And there were people from Pakistan, Afghanistan, the Maghreb, Somalia, and so on and so forth. When you go away from this common political interest, you see a lot of, of cultural or whatever differences uh, and whatever there is in struggle. But in this situation of our common interest, it can work. Another brief example, I'm loosely connected to a catering enterprise uh, created by refugees and uh, former guest workers and uh, second, third generation guest workers from ex-Yugoslavia. Very interesting project saying, we, exactly as what Louis said now, we are dealing with, our, with common and different problems in working together. Um, and, and yeah, and so finally I think also that uh, this, this question about political change, I mean, yeah, the arts, NGOs, civil society, in a way it's always a, a struggle against wind mills and whatever it is and against states. The ambivalence I always see also in these artistic projects is between individually helping and being politically active. This is not mutually exclusive, but as uh, the day only has 24 hours, we have our priorities. And I think sometimes it's problematic to say, okay, we help individual refugees, we have a job for them, and not at least trying to uh, influence society on a bit larger scale. Well, I thank you kindly. Thank you both very much. It was very, very interesting and inspiring. Thank you for wonderful questions, and thank you, Milena, for all of this. <laughs>